Kyoe was still a teenager when she posted her picture and her details on the net. Mark, already in his 40s, left wife, family, and job behind to follow an obsession. First time I'd ever been to Asia in my life. First country in Asia I'd ever been to. And she met me at the airport. So she was the very first person I ever met, about eight o'clock at night, looking, she was 19, I think, just turned 19 years old, just looking as cute as a button. Took me to a hotel, you know, our first, I still remember our very first kiss, of course I'd never kissed a boy before, so that was pretty interesting. I still remember how it feels like, the smell of her, and every single thing. I never planned to have a foreign lover. I just wanted someone who wouldn't exploit me, someone who would give me opportunities. To be born a Katoi in a poor family can be hard. Even in Thailand, tolerance has its limits but on practical rather than moral grounds. Kui lost her father when she was 15. For a struggling peasant family, the transition of a potential boy worker into a katoi was seen as a disaster. My grandmother once said to me, it would have been better if I had never been born. That was the turning point in my life. I had to prove I could support the family as well as any son. Kui took a factory job when her father died, and since then has supported her grandmother and her mother, brain damaged in a road accident when Kui was eight. You're in a powerful position, Mark. Does this ever worry you, the, the imbalance in this relationship? No, I, I, I don't think that's ever, ever been an issue with us. See, Thailand is just so easy to get along with. Um, we don't have problems with money, we don't have problems with making the mortgage, we don't have problems with her getting pregnant. Tell me about the attractions of a Katoi. What, what do you find so attractive in Kui? She's very feminine, so I mean she's sexy like a girl is sexy, but she's also horny like a boy is horny, so it's, you know, you couldn't really ask for much more than that in a person. I still have the male parts that women don't have. And it was that which interested Mark. Everyone's interested. Not only Mark, and not only all males. I'm interested in why I was born a man and feel like a woman. And I still don't have an answer. Kui's not had full sexual reconstruction surgery. Right. Is it something that you wouldn't like her to do, to go the whole way? Um, it's not important but I would prefer that she stays the way she is. It's a pretty big step. It's one thing to have breast implants. It's another thing to have halogen implants or a, to have your Adam's apple shaved down, but to have your tackle sawn off, it's just a big step. And is it important to your sexual relationship that she still does have her male parts? Yeah, I mean, I enjoy it, yeah. I, I, I find it a big turn on. I find uh, very feminine Asian lady boys um, who can perform the same as I can, who can't, definitely can't fake an orgasm. I find that a huge turn on. I mean, when I first met Kui, when we were first getting together and doing interesting things in private, I was shooting bullets in the headboard. It was really just the best sex I'd ever had. Hi. Hi. Mark and a friend have set up a website promoting Asian lady boys and they're on a roll. Transsexual pornography is the fastest growing phenomenon in the trade and according to Mark, drawing in the most normal of normal men. It's unbelievable the amount of guys that I talk with on the forum who are just regular, rational, normal thinking human beings and they have this one thing about them that a lot of them try and hide, there are a lot of married people. It's just like a gang of guys who talk football. And we do, we have a football forum on our message board. It's just a gang of regular guys. And as more and more of these girls become available and want to promote themselves on sites like ours, then more and more guys will, kind of like me, just suddenly be fascinated and taken with uh, Asian lady boys. 
What does that tell you, though, that this is the fastest growing area in pornography? What does that say about men's feelings and men's wants? Every aspect of human sexuality is just an exploration of a huge and, and ever deepening gray area. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's fascinating. Suriname, a small South American country with a vicious history. The Creole people here are the descendants of African slaves who suffered under one of the cruelest regimes ever imposed on a subject people. The Dutch plantation owners literally work their slaves to death, continually replenishing stocks with fresh blood from Africa. Punishments were grotesque. Slaves had no rights to their own children and were forbidden to learn to read or write. <laughs> Under these conditions, one of the few things that enabled them to survive was their African culture. The Creole people believe that we are all visited by spirits sent by God to help us through life's trials. Sexuality is shaped by the spirits. When a woman is possessed by a strong male spirit, she will desire other women, and a man will desire other men when visited by a female spirit. The result is a society where sexuality is fluid and carries no stigma. It's the quality of the relationship that counts. The spirits teach you whether you live as man and woman, woman and woman, or man and man. It's okay. As long as you handle the relationship decently. Feelings don't come from the individual. They come from God. You may live with a man for perhaps 10 years, and then in the 11th year, you get feelings for a woman. It's not your doing. It's God's doing. Iris and Ellie came together over 20 years ago when Iris' marriage was breaking down. It was the first relationship either had had with another woman, and they both have children and grandchildren of their own. I was unlucky with men, and then I found love with a woman. Where you find happiness, that's where you should stay. And I found happiness with Iris. Montana! And so I asked my family to accept us, and they did, from the oldest to the youngest. And that pleases me very much. God made everybody. We don't make ourselves. God made us. And he made homos, he made lesbians, he made bisexuals. And every one of them has a purpose. This way of thinking about same-sex desire, we find elsewhere in the black, black diaspora. We find traces of it in Africa itself. So contrary to a very dominant discourse at this moment that homosexuality is un-African, that the colonialists brought it to Africa, I say that there is ample evidence that the principles are and have been present in Africa for a long time. It is African. It is human. It is everywhere. <laughs>